tra transformation of Bogota as in terms of sustainable transport. Uh, what do you think of the situation in India is with respect to sustainable urban transport? Well, I would say that sustainable habitat is before anything a human habitat. So we must make a city for people. And unfortunately, we have been making them in the last 80 or 90 years much more for cars than for people. So we humans are pedestrians. We need to walk. And so a great city must be one that is wonderful for walking, one where it's a pleasure to walk, not just safe, but a pleasure. So uh, the first ingredient of sustainable transport are quality footpaths. I would say very wide footpaths, extremely smooth, tree-lined, no obstacles, where at least you should be able to have three wheelchairs, one next to each other, alongside, without any inconvenience. And the uh, footpaths are also essential to get to public transport. Uh, they are important by themselves, but, and I would say that what makes a difference between an advanced and a backward city is not highways or subways, but quality footpaths. Any given city has tens of thousands of kilometers of lane roads, but then they tell you, solve mobility, but do not use those lane roads, because 10% of the population have exclusive right to this space. This is crazy. It's like if you have somebody arriving in a flying saucer and you ask them, okay, please solve my mobility, immediately you say it's very obvious, you know, put some buses on those roads, but then they say, oh, no, no, don't, you cannot use those roads. So, of course, you have to begin to f think of flying saucers and monorails and uh, other Disney products, you know, uh, but clearly, uh, the obvious solution is exclusive lanes for buses. And uh, buses, by the way, are very, I look down upon today. And uh, marketing is important when we talk about transport. This is why some people pay $500,000 for a car. And if they were blindfolded, they would not notice the difference with a $50,000 car. And, and so people, so the, the, the status consideration in transport are important. They are not minor issues. So we have to make buses sexy, attractive. And the, for example, this is why we gave our BRT system the name Transmillennium. By the way, it's important to understand what a BRT system is. Buses, we have a bus system in Bogota that works exactly like a subway. The buses go in the middle of a road on exclusive corridors. People board the buses at stations. They pay before they enter the station. So when the, these big buses, two or three body buses arrive, four or six doors open simultaneously, and the station doors open simultaneously. And so you can come into the bus in a wheelchair or with a baby carriage without any obstacles. And so you can get 60, 80 people align the bus in seconds and come into the bus in seconds. And the bus will move. And so these systems, which we call BRT, are systems which have a very similar capacity as a subway, but they're even more pleasant because they are in the surface and they have natural sunlight and, and they cost 20 or 30 times less than a subway, than a metro. And uh, if there is the political decision and some good technical and managerial support, you could solve mobility with very sustainable systems such as this in very short time. So this is what a we can have cities that are more fun, more fun to walk. But I would just suggest one last thing. 
uh, since India, look, Latin America, India should learn from Latin America because Latin America is the most recent urbanization process that there has been. Colombia went from 32% urban, well, India should learn from Latin American urbanization process because it has been the most recent urbanization process. It should learn not what to do, but what not to do, how to avoid all the mistakes that we made. Today, India is 32% urban. Colombia was 32% urban in 1950. From 1950 to 2010, Colombia went from 32% urban to 75% urban. It's exactly the same, exactly the same that India will go through from now until around 2070. Well, in this transformation from in which Colombia went from 32% urban to 75% urban, the population of its main or larger cities grew around 800%. So the cities in India will grow not just because of population growth, but also because households will be smaller and because there will be many buildings different from housing. So anyway, cities in India will be in 50, 60 years at least five or six times bigger than they are today. So the new areas of cities yet to be built could be built totally different, a new different way of life where you could have hundreds of kilometers of pedestrian and bicycle-only streets or greenways, parks, crisscrossing this city. You could go across a city through a narrow park, totally tree-shaded. Children could walk out of home into these safe environments. You could also have some of these corridors with buses on exclusive lanes or trams if you want. And so it would be very easy for these buses to dip on their intersections so that you, they could go without obstacles. It would be so much more pleasant and so much cheaper. I mean, what I am trying to say is that India could have cities that are not just equally good as European cities, but that are much better and much happier than anything that has existed in the world. And I think India is missing a historical opportunity. India is missing something that nobody else can do. New York or London or Paris or Hong Kong or Tokyo would love to if they had to redo Paris from the scratch, I can assure they would do something completely different. If, if you would tell the Paris, the French, look, here you have a magic wand. You can disappear Paris or you can disappear New York and redo it again completely from scratch. They would do something totally different. Well, India is not doing anything creative, anything that m makes good use of its tropical weather. And I think the opportunity is fantastic to do something the world has not known because, and this is not talking about transport because to design transport systems, actually you really have to design cities. So, but even, but to design cities, a city is only a means to a way of life. So when we talk about designing a city where we are designing, it's a different way of life, which could be much happier where rich and poor would meet as equals in these wonderful transport systems. Rich and poor would meet in these greenways, in bicycles, uh, with trees. I think life could be much happier for an, any society. I recently read somewhere that uh, trying to solve a traffic problem by constructing flyovers is like trying to put out fire with petrol. Uh, what do you think about the idea in Indian cities where we think that flyovers are a sign of development? Uh, well, urban highways are like fences in a cow pasture. They restrict our freedom. We cannot go across them. They are like a fence. They ha generate noise. They lower real estate values all around them. They, are a, they separate areas of a city, sometimes the rich from the poor. Or so they are a disaster for cities. And elevated roads, elevated highways, or uh, these elevated flyovers or whatever, they are, they destroy cities, you know? 
they lower the values of real estate around them. They make areas below them ugly and dangerous. And the m sad thing is that they do not solve anything, you know. It is important to understand that never has a city solved traffic jams making bigger roads. Because what creates traffic is not the number of cars, but the number of trips and the length of trips. So if you make bigger roads, people make more, tri more trips and longer trips, and they go live farther, work farther, and so maybe you alleviate traffic for a few years, but after a few years, the traffic is the same. So uh, what cities should do when they make roads is to make urban roads, not highways. First of all, because urban highways will be always be jammed. So what you should do is avenues. What is an avenue different from a highway? It's a road that has traffic lights, that has giant sidewalk, tree is tree line, it has buildings, it has shops, it has bikeways, it should have BRT in the middle. And uh, if there was no traffic, the avenue will have about half the capacity or a little more than a highway. But since all highways are jammed, in fact, the capacity in terms of car carrying capacity is the same, an avenue or an avenue or a, or a highway. For example, one famous avenue is the Champs Elysees in Paris, which is one of the most famous pedestrian spaces in the world, where people, the tourists, want to go there. But it's not a pedestrian street. It has a, it's a, an avenue which has 10 car lanes. So uh, I believe that by now it's very obvious that this should not be done. As for elevated highways, many, many have been demolished all over the world. They have demolished elevated highways. ITDP, the institution which, uh, of which I am president, published a book about how m highways have been demolished all over the world. And this is available. You can even go in internet and, and access this, uh, this book about the, the history of how m so many highways have been demolished in the United States and in many cities over the last few years. By the way, you know, the biggest political protests in Europe and in the United States over the last 50 years have been mostly against the construction of new highways because they destroy value. They destroy a city character. They destroy the human nature of a city. So uh, clearly the solution is public transport. By the way, we should remember that the most, when, we're talking about, when we are talking about cities with few cars, we are not talking about some hippie dream. Such cities exist, and not only do they exist, they are the most successful cities in the world. They are the ones that attract the most tourists, the most investors, the ones that have the highest real estate prices. They are New York, they are London, they are Paris, they are Zurich, they are Tokyo. So uh, India must be very careful. Must be very careful because it's doing, it's making many big mistakes. And the sad thing is that this will not solve anything because if you say, okay, you do this horrible thing that will solve mobility, but clearly it will not solve mobility or it will not solve traffic jams. Uh, today, in uh, Indian large cities, they have less than 10% of households own cars. So imagine when there is two or three or four times more. This is, but so you clearly, if you see in Manhattan, for example, most young Indian university students would love to live in Manhattan. But most buildings in Manhattan don't have parking. So there are different ways of life. People. When they need a car, they rent one to go to the beach or to the mountains. And they use public transport. But I'm not saying people should not have cars. If people want to have cars, fine. But they, we should learn to use them in a more intelligent way. And in order to go to work or 
daily trips, we should walk, take bicycles, take public transport. It's, all of these things have a lot to do with class. For example, the upper income people in Delhi, they go to New York or to London or to Paris and they take this, the metro there, public transport. Next to the poorest of the poor in New York, in even maybe a street person who smells bad and all this, but when they come here, they don't want to never be caught near their own fellow Indians who are poorer. So all of these things are difficult because they imply changes in our way of life. But I think in the end, life will be much more fun.